Hi folks, this is all the fruit. Remember the Kepayang fruit I tried in Putrajaya in West Malaysia? Well, back then I read that everything about it is poisonous and only the fermented seeds are edible. And here I acquired some of the fermented seeds. Since then I learned a couple things. Actually, the yellowish pretty tasty pulp of this fruit is edible. I was eating it back then, but thinking it was poisonous. Now I know it's edible, so if I stumble upon the fruit once more, I know that I can eat it without much trouble. Well, the second thing I learned is that it is called football fruit, probably because of the big size and shape of the fruit. That the leaves can be eaten when sliced, the very young leaves, when sliced into fine slices and boiled. And yeah, that basically the seeds are the main, the main price about this fruit. Actually, when I was with the Orang Bidayu in uh, Sarawak, south of um, Kuching, they were collecting a couple of the seeds from the forest floor, seeds which have been lying there probably for weeks or months, and most of them were already rotten, but they collected a few who were still intact. Well, why do people do this? Why do they collect very old seeds after weeks or even months on the forest floor? Why do they boil the seeds and ferment them for like 40 days with ash and banana leaves? As far as I remember, there was, what was it, um, hydrogen cyanide or something in the seeds and the boiling and fermentation releases it and then you can leach it out with a lot of water. So I bought those seeds on the market I think in Sri Aman, now I'm in Cebu, in a different city. I've been carrying it, oh, and I'm very popular here. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be the tourist season, it, it's not a tourist town, I haven't seen a white person. Actually, I haven't seen a white person since I left Kuching a couple weeks ago. Interesting, yeah, it's really not a tourist season. Sarawak is basically one of the more touristy parts of Borneo, if you go to Kalimantan, it's easy not to see white people for months and a lot of people in remote areas of Borneo have never seen a white person, especially the children who don't travel as much. But yeah, here you are popular enough that lorry drivers uh, greet you while driving by. Well, the Kepayang seeds. Basically, yeah, it seems they wait for the fruits to rot it, for the seeds maybe to also ferment a little bit, then they collect them, boil them, um, ferment them for like 40 days with ash, banana leaves and other ingredients and then they leach out the hydrogen cyanide with water. Here this seed is intact but it seems that almost all of the other seeds have been cut in half probably to speed up the leaching process. Now I already had them for two days so I don't know if they are absolutely fresh. I mean remember this is not a not a live seed, this is something that has been boiled and and fermented and leached out and now sitting around in the tropical climate. Hmm. They taste mild. They taste like something which has been boiled and leached out. Yeah, probably also fermented. They taste like mild cheese. Yeah. They taste like cheese. No saltiness, but the sourness and the special flavor of cheese. Yeah, they taste like mild cheese. Mm. They have been used for a lot of dishes. I don't know if it's rather for the taste or more to add bulk to them. Yeah, they are nutty and nutritious. But more cheesy than nutty. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, they remind me of Kashkaval. If you have been to Bulgaria or Turkey or Greece or neighboring countries, there's a yellow cheese called Kashkaval. 
this reminds me of a very mild version of it. Not bad. Maybe I would salt them. They would treat it. Then they would treat it. It's like a scabal. Hmm. Not bad, but nothing special. But it was interesting to see the main use for this Boaque Payang. So folks, this was the Boaque Payang or football fruit. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful town of Cebu. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.